Sonic the Hedgehog has been thrilling gamers since his first appearance in 1991, but around the internet, rumors persist that the blue spiky-haired ring-loving Sega mascot has a darker side. What is Sonic.exe? There are over 20 Sonic games since its creation, with the character making countless guest appearances in other series. But in 2011, a story started making the rounds on the internet, originally posted by a user named JC the Hyena. It told the story of a lost Sonic game, one that had darker properties that would haunt one young gamer forever. And it all started with one foolish decision. A young man named Tom was a massive Sonic the Hedgehog fan. While he liked the newest games, he had a soft spot for the classics. But he never played any fan-made, hacked, or glitch-filled games before. He was happy with his current game, Sonic Unleashed, but was snapped out of his gaming by a package arriving in his mail. Grabbing it and opening it, he saw that it was a CD box accompanied by a note from his good friend Kyle, who had been off the radar for about two weeks. But something was wrong with the message that Kyle sent. The writing was scratchy and poorly written, but the message was clear. Kyle was deeply disturbed and was writing to Tom begging for help. He was desperate to get rid of the disc and sounded like he was in a panic. He said he couldn't do it because he something was after him, and whatever it was, it was much too fast. He begged Tom to destroy the disc and with it destroy whatever this entity was, and he left Tom with a final warning. Whatever you do, do not play the game. It's what he wants. Tom was freaked out, and he wanted to trust Kyle, but his curiosity got the best of him. He looked over the disc, and it looked like an average gaming disc with the exception of the word Sonic.exe written in black marker. And what was odd was it didn't look like Kyle's handwriting from the letter. Maybe Kyle had gotten this from someone else just like he had. He was about to find out. He turned on his computer and put in the disc, and the first screen looked almost exactly like the original Sonic game from 1991. Tom got excited because he had been feeling a lot of nostalgia from the original generation of games, but as he pressed start he saw something that made him nearly jump out of his chair. It was his first indication that something was very wrong with this game. It was only a few seconds, but the game screen turned into something horrific. The sky got dark, the title became covered in rust, the Sega 1991 logo suddenly turned to Sega 666, and Sonic changed. He became something disturbing, a twisted figure with black bleeding eyes with glowing red pupils that felt like they were staring right at Tom with a twisted smile. And just like that, the horrifying figure was gone as the screen faded to black. But it wouldn't be the last disturbing sign from the mystery CD. Tom was a huge fan of this game, and it didn't take long for him to figure out that something was very wrong. The save screen that popped up was from Sonic the Hedgehog 3, released several years later. The background looked like a dark, cloudy sky, similar to a level from Sonic CD. The music wasn't from Sonic games at all, but it was from the role-playing game Earthbound, but seemed somehow distorted, and all the save files just showed odd red static. But when he got to the character selection screen, he got his biggest jolt yet. There should have been three characters on the select screen for Sonic 3, and fan favorites Tails and Knuckles were there, but not present was Sonic himself. What kind of Sonic game is it if you can't even play as the man himself? But equally bizarre was one who was in his place, Sonic's famous arch nemesis Dr. Robotnik, who had never been playable in any of the main Sonic games. It was clear this wasn't a normal or glitchy game, it had been hacked. Tom didn't get scared off easily, so he chose Tails and started playing. But before he could get started, the game froze, and he could hear a twisted laugh, almost like the evil clown Kefka from Final Fantasy who definitely did not belong in this game. The game then cut to black, and eventually the game started. It looked like the first level from Sonic the Hedgehog, the Green Hill Zone, but something was off. The music was slower and distorted, and it seemed to take ages to get anywhere, with Tails running on flat ground for several minutes as the music got lower and lower. And then something horrible came into view. It was one of the little pixelated animals that made up the background, and it was dead. As Tails ran on, more animal corpses came into view, all butchered terribly. Tails even seemed to notice, having a disturbed and saddened expression on his face. As Tails ran on, the deaths seemed to become more gruesome, with animals being displayed on trees in disgusting ways or being dismembered. Tom forced Tails to move on past the gruesome scene, and then they saw something that stopped them dead in their tracks. It was Sonic, and Tails stopped as soon as he saw him. Tails seemed happy for a second, but Sonic didn't react. He stood there with his back to the screen as Tails approached, and Tom started to get a sick feeling in his stomach as the static on the game screen got worse and worse. Then Sonic turned around, and things got much worse. 
Sonic looked like he did on that brief flash at the title screen, with black eyes and blood red dots in the middle. Before anything could happen, the screen went to black again and Tom was confronted with another disturbing message. Hello, do you want to play with me? Tom knew he should just turn off the game. But before he could make his decision, the game turned on again. It was a new level, this one from Sonic 3, and it was titled Hide and Seek. While Tom didn't know what was going on, Tails did, and the little flying fox looked terrified. Tom could swear that the video game character was gesturing to him, begging for him to get out of the area, but it wasn't possible. Was it? Tails was just a video game character and there was no way for him to break the fourth wall, especially in an old school game. There was only one thing to do, run. Tom pressed down on the arrow key and tried to guide Tails through the level as quickly as possible, as odd out of place music continued to play. Suddenly his blood ran cold as the odd laugh could be heard. Sonic began appearing, those horrible red eyes visible in the background as he stalked Tails. Then suddenly he appeared, flying. Sonic wasn't supposed to be able to fly, but that didn't seem to matter in this game. And whatever he planned to do to Tails, he seemed to be enjoying it, with a twisted evil grin on his face. Then suddenly Tails tripped. The game cut to another cutscene as Sonic vanished. Tom could only watch in horror as Tails lay on the ground sobbing. Suddenly, Sonic appeared in front of him, blood dripping from his eyes. He lunged at Tails, the screen went black, and there was an ear-splitting screech for five seconds. Then a new text crawl appeared. You're too slow, want to try again? Tom was quickly brought back to the character select screen and he noticed Tails was no longer playable, his orange fur now black with expressions of terror on his face. Tom shrugged it off and chose Knuckles, and was quickly plunged back into the bizarre game. And this time, the game taunted him right at the start. You can't run found himself in a strange new level with a sky background that looked like the main menu alongside a construction zone. Tom moved Knuckles forward in the new level, and it was only seconds before Sonic appeared with the taunt, found you, and making the scene even more disturbing, Tom recognized the music from the horror game Silent Hill. But Silent Hill had been created years after these games. It wasn't long before Sonic tracked down Knuckles as well, but this time Tom actually got to play. The boss fight was short and impossible, as Sonic seemed to disappear and appear at will, almost like he was taunting him. Eventually, it went to another cutscene as Knuckles collapsed in a panic and Sonic lunged at him, and the screen cut to black as the next taunting message appeared. So many souls to play with, so little time, would you agree? It was like Sonic was taunting Tom, and he knew he had to walk away, so he turned the game off, but as he tried to sleep he could hear Tails and Knuckles crying and begging for him help, and as he dreamed he was stalked by the demon Sonic who taunted him that he'd be joining them and Kyle soon. Had this horrible Sonic done something to Tom's friend? Tom knew he needed answers, and there was only one way to get them. He fired up the game again, with Robotnik now the only choice, with Tails and Knuckles grayed out. This time he found himself in a level that he knew wasn't in any of the Sonic games, just a darkened hallway stained with blood, almost like it belonged in the Castlevania game. Robotnik seemed nervous, but not as terrified as Tails or Knuckles did. There didn't seem to be any enemies in this level, just the hallway as it got darker and darker. Tom led Robotnik down the stairs into another hallway, until he heard the laugh once again. Sonic was here. This time Sonic appeared in front of Robotnik and the game faded to a red static for about 15 seconds. Suddenly Sonic appeared again but Robotnik was nowhere to be seen. Instead Sonic looked far more realistic than he had before, with more detail than should be possible in an old school game. And he was staring directly at Tom as he smiled a twisted smile full of sharp fangs. And Tom could swear his fur was splattered with blood. Tom couldn't stop staring, hypnotized, as the screen went to black and he heard three words. I am God. Sonic leaped at the screen. The screen went black and a final message came up, reading, ready for round two, Tom? And then just as quickly the computer shut itself off. No matter what Tom did, it wouldn't turn on. He desperately tried to make sense of the horrors he had just seen and wondered what had become of Tails, Knuckles, and Robotnik. Maybe it was just a twisted game after all. Maybe if he didn't turn the game on again, it would be fine. After a while, the computer turned on again, but the CD seemed to be stuck inside. And then he heard the voice. Trying to keep this interesting for me, Tom? The game wasn't on. Where was Sonic's voice coming from? Tom turned around in horror as he saw the Sonic plushie, looking exactly like the twisted version from Sonic.exe sitting directly on his bed. What happened to Tom? No one knows. The story went viral and spread around the internet, with many wondering if there really was a cursed Sonic game out there. While there wasn't at first, other fans decided to fix that, with a fan game based on the creepy story being made not long afterward. While the story was popular, readers still had many questions. 
Namely, what was this horrible twisted Sonic and where did he come from? The original story had no origin for the demon Sonic, although many believe him to be a demon possessing Sonic's body to prey on his friends. A second story would later be published, a prequel focusing on an unknown entity known as EXE, and a young detective named Derek Green who was pursuing him. As EXE committed murders by jumping from body to body, Derek became increasingly paranoid and obsessed with the case. He uncovered a secret cult and found EXE was contained within a computer disk. He destroyed it only to find that the cult had placed copies of EXE on countless disks as backups, and he ultimately fell prey to the demon himself. Is this cursed game actually out there? Like most creepypastas, the answer is not likely. But fans who want to get up close and personal with a demonic Sonic may find that their fellow fans got a little too close for comfort with some of their recreations. And anyone who reads this story might look at those old 16-bit Sonic games just a little differently. For another mysterious killer lurking around the internet, check out X-Virus, Creepypasta Explained. Or watch the most scary creepypastas on the internet for just how dark it can get.